So hello everyone and welcome to tonight's community meeting for the bus network redesign project. My name is Reagan Cecchio and I will be serving as the moderator for tonight's meeting. Next slide. I would like to note that all MBTA activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. The MBTA complies with all federal and state civil rights requirements preventing discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, limited English proficiency, and additional protected characteristics. We welcome the diversity from across our entire service area. If you have any questions or concerns, please, vis please visit mbta.com forward slash title six, that's title VI, to reach the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. Next slide. I would also like to remind everyone of the rules for participating at this meeting, um, as well as remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. While we wish we were able to do this meeting in person, we're hoping that we have designed an online public meeting that will be interactive and provide an opportunity for us to have a conversation together. Before we can begin that conversation though, I do want to review a few technical aspects of the Zoom platform. Next slide. We have ASL interpreters tonight for the meeting. If you would like to view the ASL interpreter at all times, keep your view settings in gallery mode. It should be the default setting. You can view, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, you can change this by clicking the button that says gallery mode in the top right of your screen. Gallery mode shows all presenters together on screen. This ensures that you can see the interpreter as well as the speaker. If a presenter is sharing slides, which we are doing now, the view will change. Your screen will primarily display the slides with the presenters and interpreters video moving um, in the top right corner. Often the default will, will only show the speaker, not the ASL interpreter. To change this, you can pin the interpreter's video. So click the ellipses in the top right corner of the interpreter's video and select pin video. We are also having interpreters tonight who are translating the meeting into Spanish and Mandarin. If you require these services, please click the interpretation button on your screen, the globe icon, and select which language you wish to hear. In addition, we will be holding small group discussions later in the meeting. If you would like to be in a Spanish language or Mandarin language small group discussion, or you would like ASL interpretation services in that discussion, um, please message a project team member in the chat so we can move you to the appropriate discussion section at this time. At this moment, I will ask all English language speakers to please select English as their chosen language. This will allow you to hear translated non-English comments during the Q&A. Next slide. You can view closed captions by clicking the closed captions feature and selecting from the options shown. Show subtitle will display a caption at the bottom of the screen. View full transcript will display the meeting's audio transcription in a window to the right. Next slide. All attendees will be muted during the presentation to prevent excessive background noise. If you are viewing this meeting on a computer, you can toggle the speaker view to see the presentation more prominently. If you are on a smartphone, swipe to change views. You may use the chat button to submit a typed question or comment at any point during the meeting. The chat is not open, but if you direct your question to ask a question, you'll see it in the drop down menu. We will receive the comment and question. We will be monitoring the chat during the presentation, but do ask that you hold your substantive comments and questions for later in the meeting after the presentation. If you do have a technical problem, you can share your issue in the chat feature at any point during the meeting and we will respond as quickly as possible. I'll note that all project team members are listed with the project team next to their names in the participant list. 
So I'll note that the questions that you submit through the chat will not be visible to attendees once submitted, but we are going to try to get to as many as possible during the Q&A portion of the meeting. During the small group discussions, the chat will be visible to everyone, and we encourage you to keep all comments in the chat respectful to other attendees. If you use inappropriate language, you will be removed from the meeting. And now, after all of that, I do want to introduce Andrew McFarland uh, from the MBTA, who will begin the main presentation. Andrew. Thank you, Reagan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just going to make sure I'm spotlighted before we get started. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Andrew McFarland. I'm the manager for bus system enhancements at the MBTA. I'm joined tonight by my colleague, Rob Guptill, the MBTA director of service planning. Let's give a minute for uh, Rob to be spotlighted. Um, tonight, we are here to review the MBTA's proposals for the bus network redesign draft map. And we're also going to be looking into where um, these changes could affect service in the South Shore and communities south of Boston. For tonight's agenda, we will be, uh, Rob and I will be leading a short presentation, and then we'll dive into smaller discussion groups where we'll have an opportunity to review the proposals and talk closely with MBTA project team staff. After that, we'll reconvene for a question and answer session um, where we can answer any lingering questions you might have. Before we get started, I want to introduce Kat Benish, the MBTA's Chief of Operations Strategy, Policy, and Oversight, to give some welcome remarks. Kat? Great. Thank you, Andrew. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for taking time out of your busy days to be here. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today with the launch of our new, brand new bus network map as part of our bus network redesign program and kick off the South Shore and South Suburbs regional meeting on this draft map. Transit is essential to the region's economy, especially post pandemic and MBTA buses serve our most transit dependent populations. This area has experienced dynamic change and we need a bus service that changes with it. It is essential that the MBTA's bus network adapts. We're very excited to share our new draft network map with you. This is a once in a generation opportunity to make bold improvements to the MBTA's bus network for the people that depend on it most. Now, we're considering where people want to go, where people live, and where people work to create a better, more equitable service for our riders. But this isn't just a proposal to redesign our bus network, our, our bus maps. We're also reinvigorating the entire bus system. We do that by envisioning a number of new interesting routes that get people where they want to go to new places of employment and to new places of housing concentration across our system. We also do it by increasing service. We plan to increase bus service by 25% across the network and by 70% on weekends. We also plan to provide hundreds of thousands of riders with high frequency service. That's a bus stopping at a bus stop every 15 minutes or less throughout the service day. To make these improvements, however, there are going to be changes and trade-offs. Changes can sometimes be challenging, but I think the benefits are clear. We're building a better, more equitable service for current and future bus riders that better reflects the changing travel needs of the region through a new bus network that is simpler and easier to understand with higher frequency and better connections. We're wicked excited about this. And we want to hear from everyone here, especially our bus riders. This is our bus network proposal, but it's still a draft. The map will change meaningfully based on the feedback we receive from riders and hearing from you tonight will make it better. Thank you again for taking your time. I'll pass it now back to you, Andrew. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, before we dive into the presentation, we want to do a quick poll just to kind of get a sense of who's in the room tonight. Um, Reagan, do you want to start the poll? So the poll question is, do you ride the bus regularly at least once a month? Um, so let us know. We'd love to know um, who's in the room and, and how you use our bus system.
Great. So one last second to get your answer in. Cool. So looks like the vast majority of you are bus riders, which is great. Love to see that. Um, there are about a third of you are not currently bus riders, but we're hoping that through the, the bus network redesign process, you will become a future rider. Um, so with that, we'll start the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So what is the bus network redesign? We know that the Boston region has changed a lot in the last decade, few decades. New destinations and districts have emerged. Um, areas like the Seaport District, Kendall Square, Longwood Medical Area are now major areas for residential and commercial activity. We also know that travel patterns have changed a lot, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Bus service um, has become a vital part of getting people to where they need to go and keeping the region running. We want to make sure that our bus network is reimagined to meet these present and future needs. So bus network redesign is a holistic effort to uh, reimagine travel patterns and prepare the region for future uh, travel demand. Uh, next slide, please. The bus network redesign is just one in a suite of activities that the MBTA is undertaking to overhaul and improve bus service. In addition to rethinking where we need to put in new routes and improve existing routes, we're also looking to overhaul our fleet and facilities program. That includes replacing old buses, transitioning the bus fleet to an electric bus fleet, and um, building new bus garages in order to accommodate more buses. You might have heard recently we uh, started a new facility in Quincy. We just broke ground a few months ago um, to create a new bus garage there. We're also in the process of designing a new garage facility at Arbor Way by Far Stills to um, continue to expand the bus fleet. In addition to that, we are also looking to um, work closely with municipalities to build more bus priority. We know that um, our bus system is only as good as it's able to reliably get through uh, congested corridors. And so we need to work with area municipalities to put in more bus lanes, transit signal priority, and other street level upgrades. We're also working on other key projects such as improving the accessibility of bus stops. And we're also looking to update our fare collection system to enable all door boarding and other, other benefits. Uh, next slide, please. Just wanna take a moment to note how key municipal, municipal partnerships are to the success of bus network redesign. Um, although the MBTA operates the bus service across Eastern Massachusetts, we rely on municipal streets, municipal traffic signals, and municipal sidewalks in order to run service system-wide. That means that we need to work with 51 cities and towns in order to uh, put in more bus lanes, in order to enable reliable transit service, in order to expand layover options and, and improve berthing conditions for bus stops at the end of their routes, in order to uh, improve the shelters and the stop conditions and make sure that those conditions are accessible. And also we need to work closely with municipalities to expand our garages. We will not be successful with bus network redesign unless we have um, these strong partnerships in place. We've already started working with many of the area municipalities to do just that, but we need to continue to work with them in order to successfully enable, um, complete this, this vision. Next slide, please. And today we're, we're um, going over our proposal for the draft map, but we have been working closely with riders and municipalities, business groups, um, advocates over the last three years um, to hear what they wanna see with this new bus network. We know that um, everyone has told us loud and clear that they wanna see great bus service. And by that, they mean they want bus service that goes to where they need to go when they need to go there. They want bus service that is fast, frequent and reliable. And we wanna make sure that the system is simple and easy to use. Um, so that you can figure out where you need to go, wherever, wherever that is. Most importantly, we wanna make sure that this system is um, serving the people who need it most. Um, that's something that we saw throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and continue to see. Um, we wanna make sure that our bus system is providing those transit critical trips um, whenever we need to. Uh, next slide, please. So with our bus network redesign proposal, um, our, we have five goals. First and foremost, 
we are um, looking to prioritize social equity to make sure that the system benefits those who need it the most. Um, by social equity, we really mean trying to focus on how can we best serve the greatest number of low-income folks, people of color, seniors, people with disabilities, and people who do not have access to a car. Secondly, we want to make sure that we're providing more uh, high-frequency service, especially into busy neighborhoods that need it. Uh, third, we want to provide more all-day service. Traditionally, we've been very focused on getting folks to work at 9 a.m. and then trying to get them home from work at 5 p.m. We want to make sure that we're providing more midday service, more service later into the evening, and more service on the weekends. Fourth, we're trying to provide new connections to more places. Um, some of the areas I mentioned earlier, like Kendall Square, the Longwood Medical Area, um, the Seaport District, these are now growing areas that folks want to get to. We want to make sure that we have service that makes those connections. Fifth and finally, we want to make sure that the system is simpler and easier to use. Um, whether you've been riding the bus system for 30 years or this is your first day, we want you to be able to figure out um, how, how to use it in order to get to where you need to go. Um, so that means more consistent and uh, simpler service throughout the day. Uh, next slide, please. So with this network redesign, um, we have some really um, unprecedented commitments that we're making to improving bus service. Um, we are proposing a 25% increase in bus service hours over the next five years. Uh, we are really excited about this. Um, it is an unprecedented commitment to improving um, bus service. And um, we really think that it will be um, critical for improving transit access and transit equity across the system. Included in that 25% is a 70% increase in weekend service alone. This increase in bus service really allows us to serve hundreds of thousands of more riders. Um, we estimate that nearly 300,000 more riders would have would be within walking distance of um, high frequency service. That service that's 15 minutes or better throughout the day, seven days a week, 20 hours a day. We also estimate that um, people get a lot more connections to some of those uh, high demand locations I mentioned. Uh, for instance, 200,000 more residents would gain access to fast and frequent service to the Longwood Medical Area alone. Next slide, please. In this proposal, we are, um, we are proposing doubling the amount of high frequency service system-wide. So um, on the left, you'll see um, our current high frequency network. That's what we call our key bus routes. Um, those are routes like the 32, the 28, the one bus. Um, these are our most frequent and um, largely our most popular routes. We would like to take um, that system and essentially double the size of it over the next five years, going from 15 high frequency corridors to 30. Um, this allows us to provide a lot more crosstown service. And we also are able to add more, um, more communities to the high frequency map, um, places on the north side of the system like Everett, and Chelsea and um, Medford and Malden, but also some parts of Quincy and other parts throughout the system. Next slide, please. We're also providing a lot better connections to more places. So Longwood Medical Area, the Seaport District, Back Bay, Kendall Square, these are, are growing um, employment sectors and um, residential areas. And we're providing hundreds of thousands of more residents with direct trips to these areas. Um, with that, I will turn it over to uh, my colleague Rob Guptill to kind of walk through some um, different uh, specific service changes and trade offs. Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Guptill. I am the Director of Service Planning at the MBTA, and I'm very pleased to be here tonight to present you some of the ideas that we are considering and we hope to get your input on. Could I have the next slide, please? So we'll start in Avon, Braintree, Brockton, Holbrook, Randolph, and South Weymouth. I'll go through the routes one at a time and present some of the changes that kind of rise to the top. So starting with Route 226, this would be a service that we don't currently provide any service on Sundays, but we would introduce Sunday service on this route. We would be able to, we are proposing to 
um, increase um, weekday service during the peaks, such that um, from 6 a.m. to 7 uh, p.m., we would have at least every 30 minutes worth of service, every, the frequency of every 30 minutes. So that is an increase in service levels along that corridor. Um, moving to the west, we have routes 236 and 237 that are kind of changing in some respects. 236 today goes to South Shore Mall. We would terminate Route 236 at Braintree Station and instead create this new Route 237 that would serve South Shore Mall and then connect Braintree Station with Quincy Center Station. This would replace the section of the 230 that currently runs from Montello all the way to Quincy Center Station. The 230 would now terminate at Braintree Station and the 237 would provide service along Independence Avenue between Braintree and Quincy, Adam, uh, Quincy Center Stations while also giving the connection to South Shore Plaza. Route 238 would continue to serve South Shore Plaza and terminate at Quincy Adams. Route 238 now would consistently go to Holbrook Randolph Commuter Rail Station. And Route 240 would consistently go to Avon um, and continuing to Ashmont Station. Overall, as we can see in this neighborhood and the slide presents, we are proposing a 20% increase in Sunday service revenue vehicle miles. Uh, 8,000 more residents would get faster, more frequent service to Quincy Center. And many of the routes would run similar service today, but with better frequency and service on Sunday for some routes that do not currently have it. Next slide, please. We'll move on to Canton, Norwood, uh, Walpole, and Westwood. Uh, the two routes that serve this area, routes 34E and 716, would stay as they are. Uh, the change, though, for Route 34E is that we would make it consistent, that we would have consistent service to Walpole all day, every day, again, with service during on weekdays uh, from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. every 30 minutes, and service the rest of the day every 60 minutes. Uh, Route 716 would remain largely the same schedule that it is today. Um, and the benefit that we're seeing here is just providing greater consistency of service. I would also mention that Route 34E is proposed to serve Legacy Place as part of our proposal. And that would be a new service that is not currently available today. Uh, next slide, please. Move on to Hingham, Hull, and North Weymouth. Here, uh, we have the two routes that exist today, Route 220 and 222, combining to form a high-frequency corridor uh, from Weymouth into Quincy Center. We would coordinate these two routes so that they would each, uh, they would alternate service, and we would get at least a 15-minute frequency during the peak period. Uh, on these two routes combined. Um, there is some simplification of these routes for Route 220. Uh, we would terminate the route in Hingham Center. We would no longer serve the Hingham Loop. And for Route 222, we would have all service serve level corners uh, and make that consistent. Finally, I would note Route 714. We would also make that more consistent and do one specific routing. We would improve this service to be largely hourly, um, weekdays, Saturday, and Sunday. 
And in the southern part uh, of, of, um, of, of Hingham, uh, you can see Route 226 also serving that area. Um, that's, uh, that would be consistent service from Weymouth Landing all the way into Quincy Center. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, that was, that's Route 225 and Route 226 provides service to Braintree. Um, all right, next slide, please. Um, in Quincy and Milton, we have, as I had mentioned, that high frequency corridor for Route 220 and 222 along Washington, uh, going out to Weymouth. Uh, the other routes that are in this area are similar to what they are today, but there are some slight tweaks. Um, Route 210 uh, serves between Quincy Center and North Quincy and continues across the bridge. But instead of going to Fields Corner, we would have it turn onto Gallivan Boulevard and serve Ashmont Station. On the flip side, Route 215, uh, which serves Copeland Street and continues uh, into Boston the way that it does today, instead of going to Ashmont, which is what it does today, we would have it continue up Adam Street and terminate at Fields Corner. Um, route 245, we would make a consistent routing, um, eliminating the service along Brook Road so that it can do one consistent thing all day, every day. Route 216, we would maintain the change that we made during the pandemic and have this be a single route as opposed to individual routes, um, which were the 214 and 216. The 216 serves both ends of the peninsula uh, at a better frequency on that in the trunk than we are able to achieve if we had those two routes operate individually. Finally, um, Route 217 operates much as it does today as a largely supplemental service. Um, and Route 211 to Squantum operates largely as it does today, albeit with more frequent uh, service throughout the day and on weekends. I think I covered everything there, so we'll move on to the next slide. And I'll hand it back to Andrew. Thanks so much, Rob. Um, there will be more time for um, folks to dig into some of the proposals and to um, comment on them in the breakout group groups, which will start in a few minutes. Um, before we do that, I just want to go over our project timeline for this initiative. Um, so we just launched the public process for the draft map last week. Um, over the next three months, we will be collecting feedback, uh, doing presentations like these and a number of other engagements. I'll review in a second up until late July. Um, then we will collect, uh, we will analyze all the feedback that we have collected and then make some revisions to the map. Uh, we are expecting to go to the MBTA board of directors in the fall with a uh, final version of the map that we will then ask for their approval. Uh, once we have a, a, a vote of approval from the MBTA board, we will then transition into um, implementation. And we expect that implementation will take five years starting uh, in 2023 and extending to 2027. Um, we are anticipating doing um, annual rounds and phases of uh, implementation each year starting 2023. We are, um, with our implementation plan, we are thinking through a number of factors, including our fleet and facilities program, um, where and when we can uh, implement bus priority on different corridors throughout the system, and also our operator headcount. Next slide, please. And we're just kicking off the public engagement for the draft map, but we have had ongoing um, engagement sessions and outreach and discussions with thousands of you to date. Um, we started this process in 2019 and through surveys and focus groups through our external, external task force and um, meetings with municipalities, business groups, other advocacy organizations. We've heard from folks. Um, so 
this is just a continuation of all the feedback that we've heard to date. Um, and we're really excited that this is a culmination of all the, the, the feedback that we've collected so far. Next slide, please. Um, there are, in addition to meetings like tonight's, um, there are a number of other opportunities for folks to learn more, more about this proposal and talk with MBTA project staff. Um, so we have a number of meetings similar to this one where we'll be talking about different geographical um, areas of the system. We have two in-person meetings coming up in July, uh, one at the Bruce Bowling Building in, in Roxbury in Boston, and another one in downtown Boston at Ten Park Plaza. We'll have um, a number of station open houses that we've already started doing, where uh, project team staff will be at busy bus hubs and um, bus stations, talking with riders, getting their feedback, and letting them know about some of the proposals in the plan. We also have a number of street team engagements where we're talking to riders and promoting the, the outreach timeline and the project, um, project timeline. Next slide, please. And there are a number of great resources online for you to um, stay informed. Um, a really great resource is our project webpage, mbta.com slash BNRD. Um, there you'll find a lot of project materials, um, our draft map in an interactive and a static PDF form. There are also a number of ways that you can provide comment to us, um, including in forums like tonight's meeting. There's also a, an online feedback, feedback form um, where you can provide um, more feedback and uh, there's a series of survey, survey questions. Um, there's also a, uh, an email address where you can send comments if you wanna submit written comments as well as um, a way to submit comments by mail and um, submit a voicemail if you prefer that. Really wanna hear from you and we would really love to have all of your help uh, promoting this outreach process to um, your neighbors and anyone that you know who rides the bus system especially. We will be collecting feedback through late July of this year um, and we wanna make sure that we, we reach everybody in the system. Again, the project website for that is mbta.com slash BNRD. So with that, um, we will transition into breakout rooms. Um, Reagan, do you have some, maybe advance the next slide, please? Sure. Thanks, Andrew. You wanna set up some uh, ground rules for the breakout rooms? Yes, exactly. Thanks. So, um, So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be having some small group discussion to get your feedback and your ideas um, about the study. Um, there's not going to be any difference in the content between the rooms, um, with the exception of the non-English language breakout rooms. And as a reminder, if you prefer a non-English language breakout room and did not indicate that preference earlier, please message us in the chat. So each room is going to have a group leader who's going to facilitate the discussion, and there will also be some other staff on hand. The conversation is going to focus on your feedback on the draft network map. Um, I think, Andrew, do you want to go over some of the additional details, the instructions in the next slide, or do you want me to go through that? Um, you, want, you can tie up that. And, the key questions? Yeah. I'll keep yeah. going. All right, next yeah. slide, please, Victoria. So the key questions for discussion will be whether the proposed bus network in the region goes where you think it needs to go. And we also ask that you consider this not just from your perspective, but think about it from the perspective of your friends, family, and neighbors. Uh, does the proposed bus network in this region run as frequently as you need it to? If the proposed bus network is implemented, are you likely to ride the bus more frequently in this region? And we also would have this question to consider would be, what would you change about the proposed bus network? And this could be very route specific, it could be neighborhood specific or more general. Um, I imagine that we have a lot of time for discussion, but these are sort of the key questions we're hoping to focus in on, but we do welcome your comments about this. Um, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we're gonna place you automatically into the breakout rooms. Um, and that we're gonna have these rooms open until 7.15. So 
it's a little about 40 minutes, I'd say, um, at which point you're going to be moved back into this main room. And then, as Andrew mentioned earlier, we're going to do some general Q&A, but there should be a lot of time to have uh, these conversations. Um, Andrew, is there anything else you want to say, or are we good to send folks into the breakout rooms and begin the discussion? I think that should be good. Um, each facilitation group should have a, a version of the map available on a screen. So if folks have um, questions or they want to look at the map um, as a reference, um, that should be available in those respective groups. But I um, hope that's it. OK, one more person just joined the meeting. So I'm going to admit them before we send them into breakout rooms. Great. So for the person Thank who you. just joined, we are about to go into a small group discussion. So Shana, do you mind opening up the breakout rooms? And we will see you all back here at 715. No, um, no, Shana will do it. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Wonderful. So, Andrew, I don't know if you want to give a few remarks uh, now that you all are back from the small groups. Yeah, we had, um, in my breakout group, we had a really great discussion. We talked about um, some of the trade-offs with making different intermodal connections, like connecting to the commuter rail or ferry in some instances. Um, we also talked about uh, just with the frequency that's needed on certain corridors in order to get folks to and from um, a variety of trips throughout the day. Um, or one, one individual was talking about how uh, they often take the bus in the evening when they don't uh, have to be uh, mindful of their schedule. They can kind of be late on their own time, which is unfortunate to hear, but we definitely want to address that in some of the proposals and the ideas for improving frequency on, on many of these routes. Um, yeah, Reagan, I don't know if you had any questions from the Q&A that we wanted to dive into. No, I think we can move into the Q&A portion of the meeting. I just want to assure everyone that there was copious notes being taken in the sessions, and um, we will incorporate all of that feedback as well um, into what we're hearing from folks. So, Oh, um, Regan, I yes. believe now that we're back from the breakout rooms, everyone will need to select a language channel. So if we could all, as we English select. speakers, move into the English speaking channel then we should have uh, solved the technical difficulties. Thank you, Shana. So if everyone can uh, find the globe icon again and move into the English language room, that would be terrific, unless you are in a non-English language room. So I think it's time to move into Q&A. And again, I want to thank everyone for participating in the discussions. Um, if you... I'm going to go through some uh, instructions about the comment section in the Q&A, and so I'm going to ask you to keep your hands lowered until I go through all of my instructions today. Um, can you go to the next slide, Victoria? Thank you. So if you would like to share a comment or ask a question, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen to submit the typed question or comment. You will submit those questions. You'll see a drop down menu, and one of those options you will have will be for ask a question here. Um, please select that when you are ready. And we are going to alternate between reading questions and comments already submitted and recognizing those who want to pose a question verbally. We'll ask you to be brief because we want to hear from everyone um, who can speak tonight. Um, people who wish to share a question or comment verbally can press the raise hand button. For those, of, I don't think there's anyone by phone, but if you are joining by phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star and then the number nine. For attendees who speak Spanish or Mandarin, please raise your hand to provide your comments and questions verbally for the interpreters to hear and repeat your comments. When we recognize your name, you will be unmuted and you may speak. And after you share your comment, we will lower your hand and then you will be returned to the muted state. Now, I know I, some folks have raised their hand. I'm going to ask you to lower your hand one more time because before we open up the uh, comment and question section to the public, we would like to invite any elected officials in attendance or their staff to ask questions and make comments. So you can use the raise hand feature so we can recognize and unmute you. So do we have any elected officials 
or their staff tonight who would like to make a comment? Okay, I know a lot of people were able to speak in the, um, in the breakout rooms too, so that is great. Um, so now I think we are ready to move into the um, public comment section of the evening. So if you would like to raise your hand or submit a question through the chat, um, that would be terrific. And um, I will note that I know we received some written comments prior to the breakout rooms. Um, I'm assuming that you were able to ask those questions in the breakout rooms, but if not, um, please just let me know. You could or raise your hand at that time. So uh, Shana, can you uh, unmute Frankly, I think. Hi, welcome. Hi. Uh, yeah, we had a great breakout group. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll be brief. I did try the um, comparison trips between the current and the redesign. I live on the west side of Milton and uh, my comment was specific to the 716 bus route. And um, when I did the uh, comparative trip, it involves a lot of walking. It does save some time, but my suggestion would be if they could extend the 716 from Mattapan Station to the uh, commuter rail stop on Blue Hill Avenue, the couple years in the making uh, by Cummings Highway and Woodhaven Street, um, that would make the trip even shorter. Uh, and also in terms of people who want to come out and go to the Blue Hills, for the recreation or skiing year round, they could come out and, and utilize that. So um, uh, if, if I need to explain more, just let me know. Let me know if you have enough information. Thanks so much for that feedback. Um, I don't know if Rob um, or any other um, folks from service planning might want to speak to um, some of those points about potentially extending the 716. Um, and it sounds like kind of making it kind of go deeper into Boston, but any um, any response that we could provide? Yeah, I'm happy to, to speak. Thanks. So certainly one of the things that we think about when we're routing uh, bus routes is where we can lay them over and where we can turn them around. And stations like Mattapan Station that have dedicated space for buses are great places to do that. And they provide connections to the rapid transit system, in this case, the Mattapan high-speed line. So it is a good termination point for routes that are coming from the south. Finding a termination point, a layover point further into the city at a commuter rail station where there really isn't um, street space to lay over buses and easy ways to turn buses around makes that difficult. I did want to mention though, um, in the network, and we didn't talk about those today because this was in the, um, the Dorchester, Mattapan area. Um, there are two routes, we have several routes that do connect uh, to Mattapan station. Uh, Route 30 from Forest Hills, as it does today, Route 28 uh, that would connect all the way from Kenmore through the LMA uh, down to Nubian and down Blue Hill Avenue, all the way to Mattapan Station. There would be Route 24 that does as it, as it does today that connects Ashmont to Mattapan via River Street and then continues uh, down River Street to Dedham, terminating at Dedham Mall. And then a, a new Route 26 uh, that would replace the current Route 26 that connects Mattapan to Fields Corner, corner uh, via Norfolk Street. So while the 716 may terminate it, at, in Mattapan, we feel like this network provides a lot of great uh, transfer opportunities to places east, west, uh, south, and, and north. 
Thanks so much for that, Rob. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Um, I know that we've gotten a few written comments um, that I want to, a few written questions that I want to address. Um, if the folks who've been waiting patiently with their hands raised could just wait patiently a little bit longer. Victoria, do you mind going to the next slide too? I think, I know Andrew already reviewed the next slide, but it does have the information about how to provide feedback um, and the appropriate links. So I think, Andrew, we have gotten a few questions since we've come back from breakout rooms. One from Owen, who's asking about the Route 222. Um, he said, where it diverges from Route 220 in North, North Weymouth, a slight routing change is shown, C Street is removed. Is that deliberate? I guess that might be a thanks. Rob question. Yeah, That's thanks for that question. Yeah. question. yeah, Rob, feel free to <laughs> jump in now. Yes, so today Route 222 does use C Street. Um, we were proposing to keep it on Washington Ave, um, uh, uh, well, Bridge Street at that point, excuse me, uh, a little bit longer um, and make the turn after C Street. Uh, but that is, you know, one of the details. If, if people if that people think that's problematic, we certainly we can talk about it uh, at a meeting like tonight or we can talk about it you know, with our uh, Weymouth contacts. Thanks, Rob. So we do have a few other questions from the chat. Um, Gordon, and I'm just gonna keep you on the spot, Rob, I think. Um, Gordon is asking if you can explain the new route 237. I don't know if you need a map for that, but. Um, I'm, should I share my screen to be able to point to it on a, on the, on a map? Sure, I, I'm going to note real quick that we are at 726, but I think we can go a little longer tonight, but to answer people's questions. Andrew, are you okay with that? Yeah, let's go maybe till 740 or so. Okay, perfect. So Thanks. yeah, Rob, um, I think if you're able to share screen, Victoria can stop her share. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see my screen now. Yeah, I can see it. Thanks, Rob. Let me bring out Route 237. So this would be a new route uh, that operates between Quincy Center and Braintree Station via Independence Avenue, and then connects over to South Shore Plaza. Uh, it would replace the connection that Route 236 provides today between Braintree and Quincy and, and South Shore Plaza. Uh, but it would, and it would also replace the service that Route 230 provides today between Braintree and Quincy Center. So it kind of simplifies service, gets a single route um, with more consistent, better frequency than we have today on those corridors um, and provides that uh, connection over to South Shore Plaza. Great, thank you. I'm gonna ask you to keep your map up for a second because I have one more <laughs> question for you. Um, and that is from Alan. And in, in the new proposed draft map, does MBTA Route 34E add Walpole Center on Sundays or will it end at East Walpole? Or will it still end at East Walpole, I meant to say? So the proposal is constituted right now is consistent service Mon uh, weekdays, Saturdays and Sundays. So unlike today where uh, we have late night service and Sunday service ending in East Walpole, uh, under this proposal, all service would go to Walpole Center. Great, Reagan, maybe we can go to some other raised hand yes, questions. That's Great. what I'm about to move to. Awesome. So. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Rob. Um, so I think we've got all the written questions I think have we've addressed. So I'm going to go Clark, uh, Shana, can you unmute Clark for us, please? Yes, thank you very much. Um, before I ask the question, I say I disagree with that change to the 222. Uh, I think that will cause delays to make that sharp turn in heavy traffic at rush hour. Um, I want to say that I think that Hingham bus and the buses in that part of the South Shore are mostly carrying reverse commuters. That is people who work at restaurants, uh, rest homes, other things like that. And 
I would like to see uh, a look at, at better connectivity to the major job centers. Uh, think globally like a, a bus route from Hull somehow through Hingham, somehow through Weymouth, the South Shore Hospital, the Braintree. And that would bring a lot of, and hitting as many employment centers as you could, because it's getting harder and harder for uh, workers at restaurants and things like that to find housing locally. I also want to say that the Route 714 does not seem to accept Charlie cards. And so it would be better if that route was just free, uh, given the low ridership. Because uh, I don't carry change around. I live on that route. I never use it because I have to go find 85 cents or some amount of money to put in coins. Where I, otherwise, I have a Charlie card. The other thing is that there's lack of connectivity to the commuter rail stations uh, and things like that. But I, I just the big picture is that we need better routes. We need uh, summer service to haul uh, on a regular bus. And we need it from Quincy and we need a shuttle from the Nantasket Junction Station. But it's just, a, this route is totally undeveloped. And there's so much new employment, uh, particularly in South Hingham along the Route 3 corridor, that there, a bus route, uh, bus route serving that. And the last thing is that I was told that the bus 222 ends at Route 53 and employees at Linden Ponds, which is about half a mile down the road, walk down the highway where there's no sidewalks and that's unsafe. So I think MassDOT should be asked to subsidize extending that service, at least in Linden Ponds and as far as Derby Street shops until they actually build sidewalks. Because right now, uh, employees are at risk. So I could go on. No, thank you, Clark. Um, this is you know, really good feedback. Um, Rob, I don't know if you have any Comment. That was that was great. Feedback. Sorry, Rob, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, great feedback. I think it's really helpful to hear about the employment destinations, the residential destinations that this map is not covering as well as people would like. So, thank you for that comment. Thank you, um, Shana. Can you unmute uh, Jamila? Jamila, you should be able to speak. Hi, you can hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, so my concern, wait, Michael, wait, Michael. My concern is just for the 238. Now, I, I thought that the plan was to move the stop to, I think it's Abington and Central Street from West and um, I think Ida. Oh, West and Sullivan. But my only concern is for me, like I've lost a lot of weight. I'm, it's, I'm a little bit more, wait a minute and let me finish this. I'm a little more able-bodied, but what about the seniors that live up there? Like that, I walked to get my son today from school and he's like along that route. And I've lost a hundred pounds and it still took me 15 minutes in decent weather. And I like, cause I just had a surgery, but that's TMI, that's irrelevant. What's relevant is it took me in way better shape, 15 minutes, and I'm only 40. Now, what about somebody that's in their, you know, 70s? Or there's, there's a, quite a few people that are kind of, you know, and, and last year I was one of those people that wouldn't be able to do that. That route would have taken me probably almost, I would say, 40 minutes to 45 minutes just to get to that bus stop. So that's my only concern about that. No, thank you for your comments. Rob, I don't know if you want to talk about considerations of those kinds of considerations that went into planning and any re specific responses to this route in question. Yeah, I didn't quite catch the location that was mentioned, but certainly when we are thinking about bus routes and placing bus stops, we aim for an average stop spacing uh, generally between 750 to about 1300 feet. Uh, that's what we feel has a nice balance between walking distance and making sure that the bus isn't stopping so frequently that it really slows down the trip. 
Great. And so what I would just urge to is I know in the chat, um, if there's specifics about this location that anyone feels or other locations um, about walking distance to please include that in the comments. Um, that would be really helpful for the team, if I can speak for the team. Um, I think, Andrew, I think the only comment we have left, I think we have Naftali, Naftali left, I think then maybe we would wrap up. So um, I might ask Victoria to share her screen again so people have the feedback information. Oh, I see one more hand raised too. I see two more, two more comments and then I think we'll adjourn if that works. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so uh, can we unmute Neftali um, for Neftali's question? Hi. So, so this question, so the question, so this question of comments can only pertain to like, you know, the, the, the South Shore area. Yeah, we would um, prefer just to keep it to this, oh, this oh, geographic area. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, everything's fine. I mean, sometimes you kind of wish like things would. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's too bad that there's like no way you can provide like more intermodal you know, you know, con you know, connections between like the ferry or the, or the commuter rail. And, and also, are there, are there, are there any plans or is it possible to, um, you know, to have more, you know, like frequent service from the, um, you know, from the red line to the to South Shore Plaza, especially with people that, that go shopping there and want to do Dame Busters? Yeah. Right. Um, Andrew, do you want to? Yeah. Well, to I'll let Rob resp respond. But I just mentioned that this is something that we were discussing in our breakout group about just trying to provide more um, high frequency service connecting the red line to South Shore Plaza because um, Natalia and a bunch of other folks kind of identified it as a, a key destination for employment and shopping and other things. So, so um, I don't know, Rob, if you have anything you want to react to or respond to on that. I just mentioned that there are two routes that we are proposing to serve South Shore Plaza under this Route 238 that would have the connection to the red line at Quincy Adams and Route 237 that would connect to the red line at Braintree and at Quincy Center. Great. Thank you, Rob. So I think Owen gets the honor of being the last question of the evening. So Shana, can you unmute Owen? Owen, you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, could we have the map again, please? Sure. Rob, are you able to share? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, route, uh, route 226. And this, we talked about this in the breakout room. At uh, close, at the intersection of Washington and Middle Streets, uh, which is uh, a little ways, yeah, right there. Uh, well, was there a second ago? Right here. Yes. About three quarters of a mile north on Middle Street from that area, there's a uh, development housing authority, family housing. Uh, a couple hundred units that is not well served at all. And it just appears that it would be possible to extend, and rather than turning left on Washington Street as you're coming up from, uh, from Columbian Square, straight up on Middle Street to that next intersection, which is just off the map to the north now, you're right, left on Essex Street here, yep. <clears throat> continuing north to Broad Street, left on Broad Street and converging with we're shown right now, that would be a right on Washington Street. Seems to be about the same distance and would provide service to an seemingly deserve, deserving underserved area that is today underserved. Thank you. Uh, we will take notes of that and and take a closer look. Yes, thank you, Owen. Um, all right, so thank you, Rob. I think I think your screen, I think we can now flip to the final slides. And Andrew, I will turn it back over to you for final thoughts. 
Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time out of their busy schedules to, to be here tonight and to talk about these proposals. Again, just wanted to encourage folks to stay involved in this process over the next few months. Uh, we are actively collecting public engagement uh, feedback for up until late July. So um, please use these resources, visit the website uh, at www.mbta.com slash BNRD. And um, please promote this process to your neighbors, your, your family members, your um, people you work with, et cetera. We wanna make sure that everyone who um, is impacted by these changes has an opportunity to weigh in to make sure that this is um, a system that serves them. But um, with that, we will wrap up. Um, and thank you so much to the project team for all the support throughout the evening.